equate to a four point five billion dollar valuation, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, but I mean, Kleiner Perkins is behind them, and they know how to pick them. So it's like, obviously, Twitter is something special. But when you look around and look where the activity is, the acquisitions, um, you know, they're they're in these new kind of cutting edge areas. Like mobile's hot, you know, social media is hot, um, you know, digital display, it's not hot, right? And so. If you can get to profitability in any of the hot sectors, if you can come close to it, um, there's a you know, there's some you know, real opportunity out there to uh, to make an exit. What's the, the yeah, I don't know if you can say, but what's the kind of the breakup of your uh, you know of your dollar mm -hmm. that, that for, you know it goes to BMW and then to Lamar Odom and then to you? Well, so BMW pays us, right? So they pay us, and we give you know a portion of that to Lamar because he promotes it. So we take a typical split, right? So it's we're just like an ad network, mm -hmm. but instead of selling like you know this website, we're selling this news feed or Twitter feed, or whatever it is. Um, and so we just take a we take a split. Is there any problem? Like, odd, like I mean, Groupon seems odd that it's you know basically fifty fifty or whatever. I thought that was kind of an odd skew. Um, that they could take down such a huge part of the... Yeah, but I mean, if you have, again, this goes kind of back to, you know, if you have the attention of the masses, right, and you can do things at scale with efficiency, um, it makes sense for advertisers to, um, for marketers to, you know, work at that, you know, at that price point, right? It makes, like, the reason why people come back Whenever you see someone renew, it means it worked, right? Mm -hmm. And they're coming back again and again and again. And so something's working. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily know the Groupon model in and out, but uh, I do know that their success isn't. Uh, I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a fluke. And I think that the whole um, kind of group sharing, couponing, is uh, probably. I mean, it's probably the hottest industry like today. Of what's happening in the internet? But there's a parallel there between what they're doing and what you're doing, right? Because oh, absolutely. You are, you are both. Take, talking to somebody who cares to listen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so much of advertising is wasted because it's directed at people that don't care to listen. Absolutely. That's and, and the key to what you're doing and what they do yeah. is that you're only talking to people that care to listen. That's right. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Eyeballs. Yeah, it's all about eyeballs. But from a marketing perspective, like if you go to Groupon, they give you results, right? You're paying for results. Mm -hmm. Here, like you said, you, you have some, some function to be able to maybe see how much, mm -hmm. what's the conversion rate is, mm -hmm. but um, like, are you paying, is it CPCs people are paying for, or are they paying, hey, I'm paying X dollars to yeah, get a kid for question. Question. Um, Yeah, it's actually on a flat fee model. So we charge a flat fee per tweet, per update. But what we do is we expect it to back out to efficient return on investment. So even though we sell on a flat fee, say for $10,000, we expect that $10,000 to equate to a certain amount of clicks, certain amount of shares, retweets, likes, things like that. And then those metrics, which are action metrics, right? Like a lot of digital advertising is about impression. Like, oh, your ad was up on the page when you know, 10 million people came through. And so this is, you know, so this was a successful experience for you, Mr. Advertiser, right? When we say, hey, look, we don't even, we don't even look at impression. We say, here are the actions. And for the dollar, each dollar you gave us, you got this in return. And so it's, you know, we basically cut through all the, the bullshit that's out there and say, like, dollar for dollar, you know, we know we're more competitive than the display, we can compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with Facebook, and we're 10 times more efficient than Twitter. And so, you know, that's where our success comes, that's where our renewals come from. Do you give them the expectations of what Yeah, you're absolutely. So, like, when we, like, lead off a campaign, so because we sell on a flat fee, um, for instance, the Old Navy campaign, right? Um, Lauren, we expected her to do between I'd say 10,000 to 12,000 clicks. That's what she typically does on average. And so we sold that at a specific fee that we were expecting it to back out to that. But she did 29,000 clicks. So she actually overperformed. And it was because it was good content from Old Navy and people liked it. They shared it. And so when, when advertisers come in, we call it paid, right? They're coming in with this paid mindset they're going to back out. But then there's this whole earned uh, like value they get from Twitter and Facebook. And so because they, people can share, because people can pass it along to another user, if the content's good, you basically get, you know, your paid expectations are already efficient, mm -hmm. and then your earned media 
um, could drive a, a really effective return on investment. So it's part of additional part of your value proposition. Yeah, absolutely. And when and when you think of our theatricals that we've done, I mean, how, how like intrusive is it to promote a you know, theatrical? It's like, hey, check out Channing Tatum in the new like Dear John movie. Like, that's not a bad ad experience. You know, you don't have to wait 15 seconds to like see your content before you can like access. You know, and if you don't want to see ads, like. Just look up to the next tweet. You know, it's, like, it's, it's, it's that simple. And then we did, so we did 24,000 of these last year. Twitter does about 24,000 tweets every three seconds, right? So when you look at the frequency, like it's not like we're burying an audience. We don't, we don't ever go more than once a day on one account. And because we have so many, our publisher base, so many celebrities that we work with, we've never even had like frequency in terms of once every other day, right? So it's maybe one a week at the max these people might, you know, we might put in their stream, but the, you know, the return that we get out of it, um, it's just continued to creep up and to the right in terms of it's becoming more and more and more efficient, especially as these platforms keep growing. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever run into like an issue where you have like, I don't know, a person promoting one product, but they talk about another product around the same time? Yeah, we try and, um, so that's a, another good question. Um, celebrities are really cognizant about who pays them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And as easy as it is to give them a check, like they'll they'll basically say, hey, you know, I'm about to do this thing with Carl's Jr. and maybe this isn't right with Arby's right now. And so we haven't had a single instance of any type of brand adjacency, negative or competitive. Um, I foresee that will happen in the future, and a lot of brands are sensitive around that. Um, but uh, we've done a pretty good job so far steering around it. And we have some algorithms that tell us what celebrities are endorsing. So we can kind of already see like where brand affinity is. So we can pull, like we can put in like the word Nike. Like if we're running a campaign for Adidas, we'll put in Nike and see like, have they tweeted about, you know, a competitor or even it's Reebok or whoever, I don't know if Reebok's still around, but uh, like whoever the competitor <laughs> is, um, like we can do a, a competitive analysis to make sure that our celebrities haven't been like, yeah, go competitor like last week. That's awesome. Very good. Um, good to see you actually. Can you talk a bit about the technology, the platform? Originally it was sure. just a big ad server essentially. Yeah, so it's really simple. Um, so if you use Twitter or Facebook and you use any mobile apps, those mobile apps are authenticated. You've authenticated them to use to basically publish for you, right? Yeah. So when you're on your mobile device, you're, you're publishing through an application, right? And so you're not actually posting on Twitter.com like the, the mobile app is. So our ad server is an application, right? So it's authenticated to the celebrity's account. And so we just added one additional step to it. So we create the message for them. We send it to them for approval. And then they say, say yes or no. And then once they say yes, it goes into a queue, right? So it's basically whenever it needs the flight, it's already been greenlit and it goes when, it, when it's told to go. And so, you know, it's a really simple you know, type of technology that we use uh, to build the application on the Twitter and Facebook API. And, um, and because we built a lot of product around um, what we do, um, you know, we can, we can reach out to 200 celebrities right now. You just built it around the existing APIs? Yeah. Um, so we, do, we, we have direct feed, like, you know, because we're authenticated through their Twitter and Facebook accounts, um, it's a really simple process. I mean, it's about as complicated as a friend request. Right, all they have to say is yes or no. And, uh, and for us to be able to package 200 celebrities for an endorsement that needs to happen tomorrow, that's pretty unrealistic in terms of the traditional like, <laughs> yeah. endorsement Too many phone business. calls. Yeah. yeah, no phone calls at all. Yep. Um, and we don't, we don't get on the phone much, um, if at all, really. It's all done you know, through the, the platform. Um, and then, you know, it flights, it reports, it tracks keywords, conversations, mentions, you know, all the KPIs around, you know, the actual campaign. And then, you know, within 24 hours, we can have 90% of our reporting done, wrapped up into a report and put back to the advertiser. So they can see, almost in real time, like, who moves the needle for them. And if we need to go again in three more days, we can say, hey, look, this worked, this didn't, let's, you know, let's optimize and go this way. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty exciting, especially when, you can see it happening in real time. Um, so last week, finding moment, hashtag winning. <laughs> uh, so we created. Uh, awesome. This was really fun. Um, and if you guys ever want to.